Hey, Ready Up Live, I'm here in Montreal at Compulsion Games checking out We Happy Few. So it's going to be full of all sorts of weird and wonderful things. Um, and uh, what we're going to do is I can basically talk you through the key things we're trying to achieve with this update. Um, and almost all of it relates to player feedback that we've got. It's going to be buggy, but eventually it'll be better. One of you guys gets the couch in here. Um, the team will be coming in and out, but um, you know, just to get coffee and drinks and stuff. I am one of you guys to take the conference room. So I'm taking the conference room. I'm about to play We Happy Few. I actually started streaming this last night. Had a lot of fun with it. So let's see how the newest build is. So now you just sit down. And it's kind of good because in the world, standing still and not doing anything is, is seen as highly suspicious. But sitting on a park bench is like, nah, you're cool. Like everything's good. This is procedurally generated. We didn't lay this by hand. So you see here that on the left hand side, you've got the sidewalk appearing as it should to kind of cover up the scene here, but on this side it's not done yet. And that's just the nature of the procedural system. We've got other things that are more important to focus on right now. A lot of the player feedback has been like, you know, it's great, the world needs to feel a bit more lifted, it needs to feel a bit more alive. It's like, you know, when you go through a town in The Witcher, you've got your guards and they're gonna respond to you, that sort of thing. But you've also got these guys just sitting there sweeping. And they'll just sweep, just doing this stuff for a while. And you don't really care, it's just like a really nice, um, it, it's like a trick you use to make the world feel more alive while still retaining um, this feeling. So this is like super early implementation, it came in, um, came in a couple of weeks ago. We didn't want to make it so that you could go into every building here, because then it all gets very similar very quickly. We don't have a team that's big enough to do that. So we created an entire filler building system, which is basically saying, Okay, we've got these points of interest dotted around, all of these cool things that you can do, and in between them we massage those areas with these procedurally generated um, filler buildings. But when you save the game and reload it, occasionally this happens. So basically you can see that inside this house it's actually just a shell. Um, it's, a, it's again very much a trick that we're using to create the illusion of um, a really big fun city to go through. No matter where you are in the game, you can always use a healing item immediately, which people were finding they needed to a lot more frequently. But more importantly, you have got some joy. Ah, smoke is a bug on a drug. So this is our new joy effect. So you can see now that the world around you is substantially more vibrant. Uh, you might be able to see that the, the lines up here, for example, will go a little bit closer see that the world is very subtly changing at all time while you're on joy. And we really amp up the color and um, the feeling of the world. So we've got a procedurally generated joy music. You wander around and, you know, we can walk over here and say hello and... Couldn't be better, thanks. Wow, look at you. We've got this weird as shit big thing up here. I can understand what these guys see when they're walking through the world every day, just seeing this amazing, uh, amazing place. This guy's gonna come in and he's super cool, but if you uh, go around him without being on joy and piss people off, he becomes just very, very threatening. But the problem is, as I said, joy doesn't last. So, basically at this point, things are not going super well for me. I mentioned a little bit earlier to you guys that we have this new, um, basically this new UI, which is still a little bit of work in progress, but for example, the old UI looks like looked a bit more like this. This is old, it's not, um, it's gonna be fixed in a later update. This is no longer inventory Tetris. Receptionist is out for coffee. Typical. How am I supposed to get upstairs then? Best voice actor ever, right? When we're in the middle of development, what we typically do is we'll, um, we'll write basic lines for, say, blocking out a level. So we'll go through and we'll say, okay, this is the level, this is how we want it to work, this is the logic, this is its purpose. Um, and we get it functioning in the game. Once we're really happy with that, um, and you know, we, we talk to everyone along the way, but once we're happy with the blocking that it does what it's supposed to do, uh, we'll go talk to Alex, our narrative director, and he'll say, okay, cool. And he'll write a whole bunch of lines. 
And what we'll do is we'll use robo voices, so electronic voices basically to fill in the gaps because there's a lot of work that we have to do to involve like hooking up all of this audio and um, sort of creating a right experience. And it's much easier for us to understand what it feels like and what it should be like if we've got um, robo voices. We could record temp dialogue. Uh, we could do that, but it's very expensive and it adds a time delay. Alright, so secret bit of blue. A rubber fetish suit and an electro baton. Rubber cat suit on at this point, which allows me to um, uh, basically uh, stealth through things super easily, which is super, super cool. So now we go downstairs and we find more doctors. Um, and uh, Arthur's basically trying to run away to get to the study to find out what the fuck's been going on, and... I thought vampires have to be invited in. So he taunts the doctors and... And the time. time. And finally we found his study, and um, basically this is going to show a lot of what's going on. It's a cool part of the story that we don't want to reveal, so instead we play it to a joke about how Basically, we, I redacted it. Um, so, in the main vision of the game, you're going to find a lot more about what happened there, but people will have to wait for now. I now know about Gemma, I know that she's been taken away, so obviously she's uncovered something that's a big deal. Um, so you go back and you figure out, okay, so what was it? And you try and trace back her steps to figure out what's been going on. This is a, sort of the big quiz chain for, um, for the main and I'm oh, sorry, not the main and the next update, which doesn't have a name yet. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much, that pretty covers the, the main things that we wanted to try and attempt with this update. Um, and uh, as I said, it's pretty much responding to everything people wanted. So more story, no more inventory Tetris, a lot of quality of life changes that are gonna make things uh, way better and allow people to have a lot more fun in the game. Snug is a bug on a drug.